today on that Kelty Guy Drywall School, I'm going to show you how the pros tape drywall flat joints like recessed joints and butt joints, so stick around. All right, now we're at the stage we're done the pre-filling now we're ready to tape it now there's several ways you could tape it you could do hand taping banjo the tape buddy or a bazooka here i'm going to show you the bazooka we're also going to compare the bazooka to a banjo now in a previous video i did a i showed where you can tape with the tape buddy now it may come out after or before this, but if you want to know the simplest way to tape and the cheapest, check that video out. This is going to be how the pros do it. This is how we get your job done really fast. Now this is a level five bazooka and this is the kilted guy edition. Well, I made it that way today, but anyway, these are, um, this is a brand new tool, never been used. So I'm going to, break it in right now and see if it works right out of the box and i'm going to show you how well these things work so let's set this thing up now if you want to know all the details about how to run this how to set it up etc i'm going to put a separate video out about that because that can take a little bit of time to walk you through the whole thing but in that one i'll show you how to fill it up how everything on here works and how to basically maintain it clean it etc so I'm going to go ahead and set this up here. So this is the pump that fills it up. <clears throat> this is called the gooseneck and it's made especially for this. You'll see it just fits right down in there. There's a little filler nozzle right here that just goes into the end of the bazooka or the gooseneck and it rests in that little cradle. Then we put the joint tape on here and we run it down through the slide and you can see it comes out the bottom we're ready to go there's some other things we got to do or you could pump mud all over the floor now i forgot one step this is brand new there's air in here we want to pump this until the air comes out there it is right there now we have all the air pumped out because if we don't do that we're going to pump air into here and we will get a blister just like we're some amateur okay when you're taping with these tools you want it thinner than regular this if i was using this by hand you can see it's pretty soupy it would run right off my knife so you want to thin this down a little extra for when you're running it through these tools you can see it's not very thick on this paddle this is a we call it a potato masher this is commonly used when we're taping because it's good for keeping this stirred up and keeping us from sucking air into the pump so we put this on here i put my finger in the top here and we pump you'll feel when the piston comes up to the top here so the first thing I do when I'm taping is I tape the butt joint and get all those taped and then come back and do the recesses. And then the final step is the angles. In this video, we're just going to tape the butt joints and the recess joints. In a separate video, I'll show you the angles because it's quite a bit different. We have totally different tools for that. And I don't want to run this video too long. So we get it up here and we open this valve here which release it essentially connects this this wheel to this to this cable and starts turning so as this wheel turns it pulls the mud up and of course that puts it onto the tape so we feed a little bit out but that's not very much it should be fine we got enough mud on the end we just put it against the wall here and putting de decent pressure we get about three inches from the top and cut it and this is the first time i've taped this way in 25 years so i went about an inch long but no big deal 
Let's go ahead and do this other one. So a lot of times you want to get that out. So I'm going to wipe this down. Let's see, I'm going to wipe this one down with this eight inch knife here. Now when you wipe these uh, butt joints down, you don't want to push real hard. You want to wipe out enough mud to where it's not too thick, but if you wipe it too hard, you're not going to leave enough for the uh, tape to be stuck. If you don't wipe it firm enough, you're going to leave too much, which is going to leave more of a hump for you to fix. You can hear that rocking. Okay, so we pulled this down. You see how it left this visible texture pattern. That's because there's a decent amount of mud in there. Now I'm going to try a new blade. This is brand new to me. This is a 10 inch skim coating blade, but some people, I guess, like this for wiping down and that, so I'm gonna try it. It's brand new to me. Now, on something like this, if you wipe too hard right from the top, it often will pull the tape down and wrinkle it. So you have to kind of do like I did there, and I still got a little bit of a wrinkle. And then I got another slight wrinkle there. I think I'm throwing mud around. So you wanna clean. Clean out the upper angle again, leave that nice and square, that wipe down, and that's basically it for that. Okay, so now we're going to do the flat, or the recess here. Now, you notice right at the top, the tape's not sticking out. All you do on this thing is just pull up on this slide, and the tape starts coming out. But if you go too far, you just get this big dry spot. So, I like to, I'm going to pull it down a little bit more again, and... I like to just kind of leave it in there sometime and just put it up here and start rolling and then start pushing the tape out and you get mud on there. You can probably see a nice coat of mud ready to go. So let's go ahead and tape this recess joint. Okay, you want to slow down when you come into the angle at least a little bit and there's two reasons for that. One is this has to be stopped when we cut or it'll jam. So we stop, cut, push it on in and we're good to go. The other reason is if you go too fast and you got a 500 foot roll on here, it can sometimes do that on you and you end up with a bird cage, bird's nest out here, kind of a mess. So for the next part, we do the same thing. And that quickly, we have two joints taped out. Now all we gotta do is wipe these down. They're slightly different than wiping down the butt joint. So now we're ready to wipe these two down. Now you don't wanna go too far because this tape will get kind of soggy and stretch. So generally depends on your skill. For this video this is plenty because i'm talking too much but when you're ready to wipe down on these longer runs you want to start somewhere away from the end it could be in the middle or at least 30 percent down the, the length of it so we're going to start right here now don't want to go too far because you start getting a lot of mud. It'll start dripping. So when you start seeing that, it's time to wipe your knife. Okay, now we're in a room that is um, about... 11 feet, 10 feet by roughly 20, 18 feet. I'm gonna go ahead and tape the rest of this room. Now it has an extra amount of butt joints because they used eight foot rock in here. So we're gonna go through and just tape it for you and let you see how long it takes. We'll start a timer and time how long it takes me to tape the rest of this room, just the flats.
Hey, if you want to increase your learning power a thousand percent, be sure to subscribe to my channel and hit that thumbs up. After you subscribe, look for that bell, click the bell, and you'll get notified of all the videos.
See what happens if you go too fast? The weight of that keeps spinning. All right, the room is taped, all the flats, the butts and all that. We'll put a time up here, how long it took me. Now keep in mind, this is the first time I've run these tools in over 25 years and it still went pretty fast. As you get really good at it, I've got a lot of little tips and tricks that I can pass on to you in future videos. And I'm gonna do one about bazooka tips and tricks. So if you wanna learn how to get really fast on one of these, and avoid the problems, be sure and watch that video too. So now we need to let it dry. Usually 24 hours is a good time, depends on your humidity. We're in a really dry climate here in Colorado. Outside right now, I think it's 20% when it's not raining or something. So it'll dry overnight for us, but make sure it's good and dry, and then you're ready to start coating. I'll do separate videos on how to coat with the mud boxes and by hand, etc. So check those videos out. Be sure and subscribe if you want to follow this series and click that bell icon. That way you get notified each time I put out a video. And give us a thumbs up. That'll make sure YouTube likes our videos enough to show it to other people so I can help them too. Hey, thanks for stopping by my channel. Look forward to seeing you on that next video. Take care, everybody.